dreams. They're gifts from our heart. They give us hope and purpose and the promise of possibility. We all have them, and we hope they all come true. But how do we make that happen? I'll tell you how. Lead with your heart, not with your fears. That's what I'm here to talk about with you today. Too many of us allow our fears to derail us from our dreams. We lose course and forget our compass is with us always. It's right here. Our hearts know the way and will lead us there. Let me ask all of you, is the life you're living now the life of your dreams? Or are you living a life feeling only partially fulfilled while your heart yearns to beat on a different path? What are your dreams that have gone unrealized? What do you long for? Do you wish you had moved to the South Pacific or went to law school, joined the Peace Corps when you got laid off, rather than rushing back into your corporate world? Or maybe you love your job and you wish you had spoken up and pushed for that promotion rather than selling yourself short. Now you're relegated to life in a cubicle next to Chatty Cathy rather than coveting that cushy corner office. What stopped you? Maybe you wish you forgave someone after years of silence or took flying lessons, started that mommy blog, or that you can open your heart to romance again. The list can go on and on. You dream of a different life, but something is holding you back. Every day I listen to people share their dreams with me, hundreds of beautiful dreams, just like yours and mine, and what fascinates me is there's only one thing, one common denominator that consistently keeps our dreams from coming true, fear. In life, it's the real F word. We all have it, it's universal. Whether you have a fear of the unknown, making a mistake, feeling rejected or unworthy, or maybe you fear going broke, looking foolish, or failing on a grand scale, let me assure you, your fear is not real. Let me explain. Of course, there's healthy fears that help us to survive, like jumping out of the way of a speeding car or calling your doctor when you find a strange lump in your body. Healthy fears mobilize us to action. But today, we're talking about unhealthy fears, false expectations appearing real. This is when we convince ourselves that if we do X, take some action, that something awful will happen. We make up stories in our mind that we pretend are real when they're really just figments of our imagination our own mental roadblocks that immobilize us from moving forward. In my practice, I see patients that are smart and talented and capable of achieving anything their hearts desire. And yet, they continually allow their fears to determine their destiny. Examples of things they say are, if I change jobs, Lauren, what if the next job is terrible and I'll be stuck because I can't keep changing jobs or my resume will look bad? What looks bad is you choosing a life of misery based on a what if that doesn't even exist. Or they say, I'm not going on that date, Lauren, because once he finds out that I never had a serious relationship, he's not gonna like me anyway. So I'm doomed to be single and alone the rest of my life. Let's get this straight. You're doomed to be single and alone the rest of your life, not because of your dating history, but because of your catastrophic thinking, which is filling you with negative energy and that's just not attractive. Or the number one issue that plagues my patients is when they say, if I speak up, they're gonna be mad at me and it's gonna cause more problems. Let me assure you, the biggest problems in both personal and professional relationships are never caused by speaking up. They're caused by people who refuse to be honest and put their truth on the table. Lack of communication dressed up as fear is the number one issue that I see in my office. In all three of these scenarios, my patients ignore what their hearts are whispering to them. Change jobs, open your heart to love, speak up. Instead, they allow their fears to paralyze them from making positive choices and realizing their dreams. So without therapy or coaching and learning to lead with their hearts, they would end up doing nothing. Let's face it, fear only becomes powerful when you give it power. None of us intend to defeat ourselves. Yet, most fears originate from a painful experience you've gone through or a negative message that you got in your past. Like maybe a teacher publicly humiliated or shamed you in class, 
when you made a mistake and now you're reluctant to take any risks. Or you were in a relationship where you felt abandoned. It broke your heart and now you're afraid to love again. Or maybe a parent belittled you into believing you'd never be good enough and that chasing your dreams was foolish. So you stay stuck. Yet your biggest risk in life is standing still. You can't settle for status quo, living without the sizzle that your life longs for. There is no place for complacency. Complacency cheats you of your dreams and the grandeur of your greatness. While your anxiety or pain may be real, your fear is not. Your catastrophic thinking is totally untrue. Your what-ifs are wasted energy that serve no purpose. The power that you give your, to your past affects who you are today, and who you are today will affect who you become tomorrow. So it's essential that you heal your past wounds, that you reframe your thinking, shift your paradigm, rewrite your life story. Then give yourself the love, acceptance, and approval that you need and deserve. And most importantly, learn to lead with your heart and give yourself permission to pursue your dreams today. I'm, I'm here to show you that there's another way. In the lovely words of singer Pharrell Williams, don't wait for the stars to be aligned. Reach up and rearrange them the way that you want. Create your own constellation, that's right. Shine your light and let it reveal your brilliance. How? Lead with your heart, not with your fears. Using the word heart as an acronym, you need to honor yourself in your dreams. Envision and evaluate. Accept accountability and activate an action plan. Review your results and revise when needed, and you will triumph over your fears and transform your life. Let me explain in more depth. H, honor yourself in your dreams. Honor your truth, your life's purpose, who you are at your core. We all have a soul signature, a vibrational energy. So champion your inner self. Do what you love. Do what lights you up. And be who you're meant to be. Then honor your dreams, goals, and visions that you hold in your heart. So many people come to me and they say, I don't know my purpose. Why am I here? But actually, you do know your purpose. It's here. You just have to listen. Stay centered and be present. Eliminate any mental interference or distractions. And sit quietly and reflect. Whether you take a walk in nature, you journal, you pray, or you meditate, quietly reflect and listen to what's in your heart. Breathe in. Fill your heart and let it reveal its messages to you and honor them. E, envision and evaluate. You must envision your dream is a reality. You must see it and believe it before you can achieve it. It's important you have a vision, but always stay open. Never have such a myopic view or such an exact picture that you close yourself up to other things that may come through that will support your dreams. Then evaluate four things. Benefit cost analysis, yourself, your support system, and your relationship with the universe. First, you want to figure out, do the benefits outweigh the costs for you to pursue your dream? And if they do, then assess yourself, evaluate. Do you have the discipline, focus, and motivation to pursue your dreams? Do you have the positive mindset and perseverance that it's going to take? If you can answer that with a positive response, then look at your support system. We all need a good support system. Who supports your dreams? Who are the positive people in your life who push you forward and believe in you? You need to surround yourself with people who pump you up and thank them often. Who diminishes your dreams? Who are those negative naysayers, those envious onlookers who discourage you? Eliminate these toxic people from your circle. Lastly, Evaluate your relationship with the universe. Pay attention to the information and messages you get. This is critical. Is the universe working in alignment with your heart and supporting your dreams? Or is it steering you in another direction? Remember this. If you are on your right heart path, the universe will collaborate with you and maximize your momentum and continue to open opportunities for you. A, accept accountability and activate an action plan. You must account for your own life. Understand, your actions and reactions are your choice. You create your reality. You attract that which occurs. 
Something I always say to my patients is, successful people will do the things that unsuccessful people don't want to do. If it were easy, everyone would be successful, but it's not. So figure it out. Do you want it bad enough? Then go for it. Then activate your action plan by outlining the steps that are going to successfully move you towards your end goal. And then take action, freely and courageously, with no limits. Then you'll review your results and revise where needed. Keep doing what's working and revise what's not. Learn from every opportunity and understand success is rarely in a straight line. So oftentimes you're going to have to circle back and course correct. But as long as you're gaining momentum moving forward, you will achieve your goals. If you follow these steps, you'll triumph over your fears and transform your life. Just lead with your hearts, not with your fears. To illustrate how our hearts whisper to us, I wanted to share a little bit of my story with you and how I used my own heart to lead my own journey. When I was 12 years old, I felt like I walked in two worlds. On the one hand, I was so boy crazy, like I couldn't get enough of those popular girly magazines like Tiger Beat and Cosmo and plastering posters of pop stars all over my bedroom walls. And on the other hand, at 12, I was probably the youngest subscriber to Psychology Today magazine. It's true. So when I wasn't just my friend's playmate, I was also their helpmate, their motivator, their cheerleader, their go-to girl for advice when they were having troubles. So when I wasn't crushing on the boys, I was playing tween shrink to my friends. And I loved this role. Sure enough, I went to college and studied psychology. And after graduating early, I really wanted to have a private practice. But that was going to require more schooling, and I wasn't in a financial position to go to school at that time. So thankfully, I had the good fortune of building an awesome career in the hospitality and special event industry. And I had held multiple management positions and eventually co-owned a very successful special event firm. My partner and I were like the hottest, youngest team in the business, at the top of our game, sitting on a potential gold mine. And I loved my work, and I had a ton of fun doing it. And yet, even with everything in my favor, my heart was gnawing at me to change directions and to pursue a career in the helping profession. So I had to decide, do I remain a premier party planner? Or do I follow my heart's call to become a healer? I could easily see myself being a therapist. And in evaluating my situation, it was clear to me that things were changing in the universe and in my personal life that were supporting the shift. I also had great support from my close circle. So I honored my heart's call to action, and I took a huge risk. I sold half my business, having only two weeks to get my applications into graduate school, and no idea if I'd even be accepted. People thought I was crazy to walk away from what I had. But you know, interestingly, I felt a peace in my heart, and I just trusted whatever was going to be was going to be. Fortunately, I was accepted to my first choice school, and I loved the program. Everything was in alignment, and I graduated with honors and earned my master's degree in social work. At that point, my first triumph was realized, and I began to transform my life. But my ultimate dream was to be a clinical psychotherapist in private practice. And according to insurance laws, that meant I had to work seven more years postgraduate school in order to begin to run a practice on my own. So I thought, wow, seriously? Seven more years I have to pay my dues? Whoa, like I need some chocolate. <laughs> my heart was leading me, and for the next seven years, I worked hard holding down two jobs, full-time social work position during the day, and I would do part-time counseling at night under the supervision of seasoned therapists so I could gain experience for that practice I wanted. I also earned three licenses and multiple certificates along the way. And in those seven years, you know what else I did? I made Hershey's stock triple. It's true, check it out. <laughs> Gotta have that chocolate. Everything I did was preparing me for my dream. So on that long-awaited magical seventh year, really wanting to have a practice, a private practice, I you know, took stock of my situation and all signs pointed to go. So I said, okay, and I took a huge leap and I hoped I'd build my wings along the way. And as you can see, I don't have a very wide wingspan, so I was flapping really hard when I left a full-time job with salary and benefits and leapt into the unknown. It was like fly and soar to new heights or 
fall flat on my face. I was a perfectionist without a parachute. I had no income, like no income, just a well thought out action plan, my sweat equity, and my passion to pursue my dreams. I could have easily let my fears steer me off course, like from where will my next, where will my next paycheck come from? Or how will I pay my bills or attract new clients? Or honestly, if I didn't build my practice quickly, how long could I live on ramen, rice pudding, and chocolate kisses? Or how long would I forego shopping for new shoes? Or going out for nights on the town with my friends? Or traveling the world I love? And yet, in spite of those fears, I knew I would rather try and risk the possibility of failing than not try at all and be haunted by the what of question the rest of my life. And I'm sure many of you feel that way too. Fortunately, I let my heart lead the way and I worked 100 hours per week my first year and I built my practice and I had a thriving practice. I had used my heart as my compass and I had honored myself in my dreams. I had envisioned and evaluated, accepted accountability and activated my action plan, reviewed results and revised when needed and triumphed over my fears and transformed my life. Being a therapist never feels like work to me. I know it's my passion and my purpose, and it's the greatest job in the world. So while I may not be planning parties anymore, I'm definitely celebrating every day with my patients. I get to shine a light on their gifts and show them their brilliance in the way to their dreams. I know when I look back from age 12 until now, my heart was always whispering to me telling me to help, to heal, to inspire, to make a difference. And as my heart led me on my journey, it definitely took me through some meaningful detours and some heartbreaking disappointments, but it also led me to take on some challenges that brought me here today. My heart was right. My heart has always known, and yours does too. So what is your heart whispering to you? You need to listen and have the courage to lead with your heart and not with your fears. And if anyone ever tells you not to bite off more than you can chew, tell them, I'd rather choke on greatness than nibble on mediocrity. As I stand before you today, I just hope that you feel inspired and motivated and excited to breathe life into your dreams. Because the tragedy in life is not death, but what we let die inside of us while we live. So please don't let your fears derail you from your dreams. Choose the path you love, the one that lights you up. Honor yourself, take chances, live life with passion. Be a warrior, not a worrier, and go in the direction of your dreams. So write that book, start that business, leave those toxic people, find love again, be a mother, be a doctor, run for office, promote world peace, whatever the life that lives inside you, make it come alive. Just use your compass and stay on course and know that you have the power to take your life wherever you want it to go. And I promise you, you will gain momentum moving forward. You will have your fairy tale ending. You will live your happily ever after, the life of your dreams, if you just lead with your heart, not with your fears. Thank you so much for your time, everybody.